So you're good. Yeah, this is just the tool you use when you connect. Oh my god, I'm such a. Oh no! I was like, wait, what is this? Welcome to Building Friendships. I am your host, John Sosis, and today I'm very excited for today's guest. She's probably, I think she's my first new friend of 2024. We met on like New Year's Eve. We did. We did, and yeah. Um, she's a comic and a comedy slash jazz club owner. <sighs> I mean, Katie Kazorla, what's up? Thank you. I mean, I, I can't believe I made it here. <laughs> I, I did not know you were moving this weekend. I think this could have been done another time. I mean, well, here's the thing. I, first of all, I'm so excited about this. I watched all the episodes. Well, thank you for doing it. And the fact that you're doing Wizarding World is huge. And I'm a big Harry Potter fan. So I'm confused as to what house you're in. I don't know what that means because I'm not a Harry <laughs> Potter fan. I just thought the set was cool. I do a lot of the film sets, but let's let's show them what sets we're doing. So as okay, you can yeah, see, yeah, yeah. I'm doing mini Hogwarts. Yeah. And as the owner of the Kookaburra Lounge, <laughs> yes. you're doing a Kookaburra, the Kingfisher. I mean, I'm doing a Kingfisher. That's right. I, I love Kookaburra birds. And uh, everybody always asks me, like, why did you name your club that? A lot of people are like, what's a Kookaburra? It's a, it laughs like a human. Yeah. It has the funniest, it's coolest. It's terrifying. It actually kind of sounds like me, if you think about it. It's a scary, scratchy <laughs> Oh my God, wait, do you want to know a fun fact about kookaburra birds? Yeah. Okay, so when they kill something, right, they put it in their mouth when they want to eat it, and they, they like shake it to death. I know, isn't that horrible? Like a mouse or a fish or whatever. They like slam it into things. That's a lot. That's a lot to start <laughs> off to start off the episode with. Um, but yeah, you could turn to page one. And oh, okay, okay. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so we have to. I'm, I'm gonna build it. Okay. Yeah, while we're, while we're talking. So All wait, right. you're you're originally from New York, right? Yeah, I'm from like a really fun town called Elmira, New York. It's upstate. Okay. It's known for its prisons. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> have you ever seen Escape from Dannemora? That's yeah. pretty much where I grew up. Like That's you're, perfect. Yeah, you're either there because your family is in prison or you work at the prison. That is a real lack of options. <laughs> um, what, how long have you been in L.A.? I actually moved to L.A. in 1999. I okay. moved out here because I wanted to do stand-up and I had won this crazy competition. And I told my parents, I'm moving out to L.A. And they're like, okay, here's some money. Good luck. And by money, it was like two thousand bucks. So you didn't? Did you start? Did you stand up in New York at all, or you just you? No, out here? I never you did. Started so out here. Wait, I have a question. Is this part of it? That's bag two. So just focus on bag <laughs> one right now. <laughs> okay, because I feel like I'm missing a piece. I mean, you haven't. Is this mean okay? It's no, this, does that this mean is, it's white? This is not. You start here. Oh. So you're good. Yeah, this is just the tool you use when you. Connect oh my God! Pieces. I'm such a fucking. Oh no! It get, I wait. This season, you'll see worse than this. We have somebody. Yeah, Kristen. I was Kristen, like, wait, what is this? Kristen Veganis was pretty impressive with with her oh, failure okay, 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 okay. of Lego. Okay, um, so I got. I mean, like, I'm good at like putting things together. Obviously, I'm project yeah. managing our entire build of the club, which has not been easy. I'm not gonna lie. If anyone wants to open up a stand-up comedy club at home, um, don't. Just don't do it, or just any business. <laughs> we, I think we're gonna we're gonna have to talk about that because it's just chaotic <laughs> that you just decided you're gonna open a like you're a comic who <laughs> had the right idea. So wait, you started comedy in LA. Oh, yeah. So I started doing it at this place called Dublin's back in okay. the day. It was like this cool place that like Jay Davis and Ahmed Ahmed, two comedy guys, started way back in the day. And I was like, you know what? I want to do comedy. This is gonna be so fun. And, uh, and after winning the competition, I said, you know, I think I can do it. So I walked in and said, hey, guys, can I um, do stand-up here? And they were like, that's not how it works. And I was like, well, just give me like five minutes. And they did. And so then it kind of like took off from there. And then I went to the comedy store and had this crazy show that I did there called Katie Yoki. Oh, boy. And it was, I know, it was really fun. It was... So it was in the belly room. Yeah. And what I had to do was I would uh, have the comics do a set, and then afterwards they had to pick a song and they had to sing it karaoke style. And by that time, it was like so late at night, everybody was drunk, and they would just sing all these like filthy songs, and it was so much fun. 
<laughs> that just seems like my nightmare. Like everybody knows I worked at the Comedy Star. I would absolutely not be sitting in on those shows. Oh my God, it was, but here's the thing. I think you would think it was really fun when you saw just the debauchery that went down at that time at night. Well, there's a, there's a, a bar naughty pig down the block and oh yeah that, that's where a lot of comics after their shifts would go down there and do karaoke there and i've been there once or twice and if i never see that again i'm okay oh my god okay so that when i was out doing my shows at the laugh factory did you ever come to wild wednesdays i didn't okay i've never been to the laugh factory which is crazy Oh. Like when I, I moved out here for the comedy store and that's where I spent all my days and nights. Wait, and really? Yeah, I took that job during the pandemic and I moved out here for that job. Okay, which I mean, I, I think had I known more people out here, they would have been like, you're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> but yeah, I moved out here for that. And then I listen, I'm not going to I don't regret it for a second because it's like the people I've met. Yeah. And, but um, yeah, I, in hindsight, if I had to go back and do it, I wouldn't. Um, I mean, I hear you. But that, that's where I spent all my time. So I, I honestly, now I, this, I first went to the, the improv a few months ago. Like, that was my first time what, at what the improv. You, what were your thoughts? I mean, what are your um, thoughts? Well, listen, I don't want to shit on the improv, yeah. but I don't love how they do things in the lab. Yeah. Um, I, otherwise, I think it's great. I think it's, I, I can understand why it's the local hotspot versus yeah. the comedy store, which is I a think the improv, track. honestly, between all the clubs, I think the improv is like the best. I yeah. want to like. I feel bad like rating the clubs, but I think as far as club wise, I think improv right now is really dialed into what comics want, and it's not just about the customer. Um, so it's about both. And I think you know if you're gonna really run a successful place, you should go from both perspectives. Yeah, no, I you agree. Know, you know I, what I'm saying? Like, where it's not just about how great it is an experience for people who are in the audience, but also the comics that are performing there. And the improv does such a great job, you know, with that. I definitely think that they are way, like, just seeing their uh, production capabilities in the main room there. Yeah. You can tell that they, they really listen to the comics, and comics said something, and they were like, all right, we're going to actually do this for them. As yeah. opposed to some other places where it's like you have to pull teeth to get anything done. I mean, um, yeah. So what made you want to get into comedy? Like, you're in New York. So I was in New York. I went to the University of Kentucky to cheer. I ended up um, being on the dance team there. I was a Wildcat dancer. And it was really fun. It was Rick Pitino's last year. So they won the national championship. And it was just a fun experience to go to school there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was also a little wild. So... <laughs> I, um, after like a year and a half, I just was getting a little tired of it. Being a New Yorker in Kentucky, it's. That's how I feel about being a New Yorker in LA. I mean, no, but imagine like that, but with like yeah, racism. It's probably way, yeah, it's probably way <laughs> worse in Kentucky. Imagine that, but then with like a bunch of racists. So. That's just the police oh. out here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's right. I totally forgot how funny you are. <laughs> I mean, come on. So, um, yeah, but, uh. I came out here and it was in between my freshman and sophomore year because I was telling jokes at this local bar in Lexington and this agent saw me and she was like, you're so funny, you should go up on stage and tell some jokes. And I said, okay, I'll give it a go. And that was like my very, very first go at it because I always wanted to do stand up. And then that's kind of how it- You got your first laugh? I did. I got up there and I didn't even really know what I was doing, but I did it because it was like it, the funniest person got a free pitcher of beer for their table. And I had a fake ID. So I was like, there you go. Oh, baller. It's fun. I didn't realize you started with a contest also. That's how I got into stand up also. When Wait, would, really? When I used to do stand up, I won an Opie and Anthony competition. And that's, yeah. that's when I started doing stand up. Because I think as a comic, you're looking for anything to advance your career faster than it should. Like, nobody who just started comedy should be doing one of those competitions. No. It should be like open mics and repetition. But I think a lot of us from our generation were just like, well, if this is any kind of notoriety, because it kind of helps to yeah. get any kind of credit that you have, um, let's just do a competition. Or like Long Island used to have competitions every weekend, and it, it got exhausting. But Long Island. Um, so you start, was, yeah. you start doing stand-up here. How, how did that go? Like, it, it seems like it's... You know, 
Honestly, everyone, I, I will say I did do, you know, waited for the open mic at the Laugh Factory. I did kind of go do the whole process. Okay. Um, but I was lucky where it kind of was fast tracked a little bit. Um, and I loved it. You know, I loved being at the comedy store, but it was, you know, during the time where it was kind of a weird, dingy. The dark days. It was the dark days. Yeah, as they call them. <laughs> Three people in the audience. <laughs> That's what it was. And literally, like, Eddie Griffin would get up and just be on stage for, like, an hour and a half wasted. And, like, everyone's like, get him off stage. And, I, I mean, it was just chaotic there. And then I quit. I said, That's it. I'm done. I had a really weird experience. And I was like, I'm done doing comedy. And then went to nail school. Because I always thought that nail salons in LA were terrible. And I went to nail school. I said, I'm going to change the nail world. And then went to nail school, found a space, opened up a nail bar, which never existed. And then it took off. And I got a television show out of it, uh, like brand endorsement deals with Kiss Cosmetics and all these nail companies. And, and that like kind of what made me have money to be able to do other things. So it wasn't, you weren't looking to stop stand up, you were looking to not have to live on the street. Exactly. I mean, LA, if, yeah, yeah. if you want to be a comic here, here's another thing. People are always like, I want to do stand up, right? I'm like, okay, so ready? Prepare to be poor as shit. <laughs> okay. You're going to have zero dollars to your name. You're going to have to do a million sets that'll equal maybe $90. <laughs> You're going to spend more on gas, parking. <laughs> like it's, it's the most a horrible business. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like, like just I remember doing it, but seeing what some of some of the people go through in L.A., I'm just like, this is, yeah, you have to have a backup plan that is your, yeah, that, that you're okay falling back on while you try to make it because it is not easy. No, it's not. And it's like, and it's not rewarding because here's the thing. It's like you go up there. It's not like a music, um, like a musician who goes, okay, I, I spent like an a year or two years or my whole life writing this album and now I'm gonna go and sing it for everyone and people are like yeah. yay no one goes boo or then heckles you or then yeah. you know writes women aren't funny like <laughs> it's like <laughs> oh you're a woman playing the guitar boo like nobody does that in any other field no it's crazy Except like you'll never go to a Broadway show no matter how bored it is and someone's and someone say get off stage it's yeah, like what or like uh, you know uh, where's Matt Rife you know it's like <laughs> I mean I don't there's so much weirdness in, in comedy yeah and honestly I think after being at the you know I took so okay so I took a break after um, that did my show then got another show in between I kind of would drop in and do you know like television yeah, yeah. stuff I did Steve Harvey Jimmy Kimmel um, what else? Stand up in stilettos. It was a really cool show. So I was kind of still kind of try to be active. Um, and then I booked another show on E. And then after that ended, I was like, I'm going back into comedy. And actually, it was so funny. So one of my best friends who I met when I first moved out here is an actor named Jeremy Renner. Okay. And, you know, he was the one that he's hilarious, by the way. I know he always plays these like serial killers and action heroes, and yeah. but he is so funny. And um, he was the one at one day, he pulled me aside at his house and he goes, Why do you, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? And I go, I don't know. He goes, everyone is always laughing. You're so funny, you're the best. He goes, you need to get your ass back down to the, either the Laugh Factory or whatever and, and start doing stand up again. He goes, go, go right now. <laughs> and, I, and I did. Easier said than done. But I did. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go. So I went down the left factory. I go, can I get on stage? And they're like, no. You need to, like, go through the process again. I go, just give me, like, 10 minutes. So I got up. They gave me 10 minutes of guest spot. And then they gave me my own show. So then that's, I started running Wild Wednesdays. And after a while, I kind of was just... You know, looking at my paycheck going, how is this even real that I'm still not making money <laughs> and I'm packing this place out on a Wednesday at 10 o'clock at night, you know? So at what point did you realize, okay, this, the industry or just comedy in LA in general, we need to sort of fix it and yeah. give ourselves a new club? I think I just got to the point where I was like, I, oh, you know what I did? I put it on Instagram, actually. I put a little poll up. It took me this long, by the way, to figure out how to put this together. You crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
And, and people are going to trust me with like a multi-million dollar comedy club in it. Guys, it's built way better than this. <laughs> I've Listen, been there. I didn't say I built it by hand. I said I, I designed it and project managed it. But like, this is hard. Um, okay, now that I got that, that makes sense. Anyways, um, yeah, so what were we talking about? <laughs> At what point did you realize you wanted to, to, to oh, create oh, your own yeah. blog? When I was looking at my, oh, I put a thing up on Instagram. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. I put this poll up and I was like, you guys, if, if like, what is the one, number one thing you hate and was the number one thing that you would love to see changed at comedy clubs? And you can just DM me on your own. You don't have to yeah. like put it in public. And I got some of the most insane um, people writing to me things. And I, you know, will always keep that secret but some of the things that people wrote to me i was like oh my god this is wild like between the pay and the way they're treated and you know the yeah. drinks and the food you know it, that comics have to pay for their own drinks when they're at clubs you it's like you're, you're already barely paying them money <laughs> yeah and then all of a sudden you're like you know what um you have a tab at the end of the night even though people came here to watch you perform i think that is just outrageously crazy and I can't imagine charging comics so that's one thing that we're definitely not doing is charging a comic for food and drinks when they're on the show yeah that is terrible actually it's not great for like because the one thing that I learned working at the comedy store is everybody talks so it's like and and I take this I, I appreciated Sarah Tiana being the one that like oh, I love her I, I love Sarah Tiana so yeah. much um, when I told her, like, when I asked her to let us do her special, the first special she did after she came out of the, pa after the pandemic, yeah. I was like, let us produce your special, we'll do it during Netflix festival, whatever. It was literally two years ago this coming May. Wait, is that how long ago it was? Yeah, they didn't do a festival last year because they lost a lot of money the first year, from what I heard, allegedly. Oh. Um, so Sarah was like, yes, let's do it, but just know if you fuck me, I will get on the rooftops and scream it. And I was like, good. Like, I know myself. I'm not fucking anybody. Oh I know. Oh, my God. I know I how I do. That. Yeah, I, knew how I, I know how I do business. So I'm, I'm not concerned about well, it. Well, there you go. She's used to. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, so, it's almost like we're just used to abuse, basically. Yeah, and that's the thing. They'll say to us, don't fuck us. And in my brain, that's the easiest thing. Like, you're not you asking for the world to not get fucked over by somebody. You're not asking for the world. And that's when I first learned how, how shitty comics are having it and yeah. just it was a lot of people said to me like they appreciate that that wasn't how I was doing anything well yeah because um, you're not a scumbag so yeah, you but know there's that, that yeah but that's also that's to say like you're it's the least you can do is not fuck these comics over because they isn't all talk that, isn't that terrible that that is the, that's the standard so yeah. the, so all I'm asking not like quality of this blah 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 it's just don't fuck me over because I don't want to take it anymore. Yeah. Isn't that, te that's terrible. So tell me more, tell me more about the club because I mean, as we wind down this, this episode, I want people to come and check yes. it out. Cause I, we saw it and it's amazing. <gasps> Wait till you see it now. I mean, it's just gotten better. It's like a polished diamond. Yeah. You saw it when it was a little bit like a diamond in the rough. Yeah. And by the way, if I was a stripper, that would be my name. I <laughs> really feel like that fits me. Don't you think that's a good name for like a middle-aged stripper? Yeah. Right? Diamond in the rough. Like, gentlemen, give Perfect. it up for diamond in the rough. And then like, it makes sense, right? <laughs> um, I mean, I do clean up well, but mostly it's a little rough. Um, but that's, the club was looking like that. And I thought, you know... Um, day by day, it's taken a long time. The city of LA has not been um, easy to work with at all. It has been actually pretty treacherous, but we're almost there. We just got our health department. Um, we just got our conditional use permit, which activates our liquor license. I mean, all of this stuff has happened in the past week while I've been packing and getting ready to move. <laughs> also, That's I must good. be like a masochist because like at this point, like, hey, if I don't have enough on my plate with opening up this club, I'm also going to throw a move in there. <laughs> so. It's cra it's crazy that you're just pi it's piling all on, but at least at, once it's all done, you'll get to enjoy it. Yeah, right? Like, it's, like, um, happening. And by the time this episode comes out, the club is open. You better check it out. It's in Ovation. Oh, yeah, it's in Ovation it's so Hollywood. Cool. Oh, my God, it's in Ovation Hollywood. It's in a great location. Fourth floor. Fourth floor. Right as you get off, like, right next to where they do the Oscars. I mean, it is, it's been pretty amazing. 
you can go to the kookaburralounge.com and get tickets. Because yeah, kookaburra. So if you go to the kookaburralounge.com or our Instagram page, shows all the lineups. Um, plus, we have Sunday jazz plans. But we're talking like world class musicians. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then all of our drinks, we just finished our drink program. There's no high fructose corn syrup in any of our drinks, all fresh squeezed juices, all house made syrups, all top quality spirits. We have vegetarian and vegan options for our menu, quality seats, a speakeasy. I mean, you thought of everything. What's the one thing that you put in there that you really were like, this is for the comics? Like forget oh. the free drinks. What's Because also the green room, Amazing. A lot of you won't be able to see it, but for the <laughs> comics who watch this, the green room is pretty uh, badass. Yeah, so we call that Katie's. I mean, everyone just decided to call it that because the okay. wallpaper in there um, is like, a, it's crazy. It's like rainbow elephants and spaceships and they have cheetah print <laughs> on them and it's wild and crazy and all over the place. And everyone says this wallpaper is like your brain when you're trying to go to sleep. And so they just said, let's just call it Katie. So it's a little private speakeasy just for the comics. And you know, if the comics want to bring their VIPs with them, um, they can. And so it's it's a secret backstage lounge and uh, I, it has its own upright piano, its own bar, secret prices just for comics. I mean, that's my favorite part of it, I think. Yeah, I mean, it, it was pretty awesome. Like that part of the club, just seeing that was pretty, uh Pretty impressive because you you can tell when a comic did something for the comics and when it was done by a comic and that's like a lot of the <laughs> things that people say about Rogan's Club like oh you can tell a comic made this the yeah. clock back there the TV back there like you can tell a comic made this club yeah you need all that stuff you yeah. know it's like that's the, that's a necessity for clubs and I feel like no one ever really thinks about some of those things they just think like what's the top dollar let's jam as many people in this place as we can and I'm anti that. You know? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you should be anti that because it just it doesn't help anybody to uh, to like make something that isn't efficient that people don't want to be at. Yeah. Can you imagine? I mean, it's like there's so many of those places in existence already. It just doesn't make sense to have another one. Um, all right, we're winding down. Last question. Okay. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Only one. That seems to be <laughs> that seems to be everyone's. I mean, I'm, I'm an Italian. Uh, half French, uh, half Moroccan, Algerian, and New Yorker. There's a lot to change. If I could change one thing, I mean, honestly, um, I wish I was a little bit taller. Really? That's, <laughs> that's the one thing? And I wish I wasn't as sensitive because um, I do, I have a big bleeding heart, so, and I wish I could rescue more dogs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Those, that, those are some good ones. They're diff definitely different ones than we've heard so far. Wait, am I supposed to be like self-deprecating? Like I wish I was. Oh no! Just... I mean, you were. You said oh. you wanted to be taller. I do, well, I'm five feet tall. Can That's you imagine? Fine. That's I wear, fine. Like, children's shoes. Um. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. Let's see how far you got. Okay. okay that's impressive. I mean, it feels that's, like it's the mechanic. Does it move? Is it a No, but it does. It is a display that the bird sits on. So oh, we'll it's make the, sure. That's yeah. not even the fun part. No, you're going to get to the fun part when you get home later. You know, in between the moving and the <laughs> opening and the Actually, club. I, this is, if I smoke weed, this would be so it's gonna ca It calms you down. Uh, where can everybody find you? Oh, okay. Um, so I'm at official Katie Cazorla is my Instagram. I know it's annoying, but somebody tried to hack my name. Um, a couple of years ago. So official Katie Cazorla and then the Kookaburra Lounge uh, is also the IG and our website. And I'm really excited to see it up and running, which might be now by the time you're watching oh, this. I but know. Come visit when you're in LA. You gotta come. Yeah. I'm walking around all the time. And, and it's every. It's in the area that everything is in. Ovation is Hollywood Boulevard. There's Jimmy Kimmel there. There's all the tour buses. There's all the. It's like the Times Square of Hollywood. Yeah. There's the stars. So, the Hamptons. Yeah. If you're staying in that area, it's walking distance. It's I'll validate you. It's three dollars to park for four Ooh. hours. What? That's the cheapest park. You're in not LA. gonna get that in LA. So <laughs> make sure you check out the Kookaburra Lounge. Uh, Follow us at Say It Ain't Sosis and the uh, Building Friendship series on Instagram. And uh, <laughs> we will see you next time. That's impressive. Look what I did. I can't wait to see how you build a comedy <laughs> club. <laughs> <laughs>